Good day, brothers and sisters. The way in which spirit moves never ceases to amaze me. And I just have to comment on that last song that we just heard by India R.E. I had the, the honor to be a part of, back in 2004, I attended a workshop with uh, Carolyn Mace, Sacred Contracts. And we dove into the world of archetypes. And India R.E. wasn't in attendance at that class. And this was something that was very unexpected. And the beautiful piece about this is that it was the same weekend that the Grammy Awards were to be, to, were to be um, aired on television. And in that workshop, she shared with us that she knew her calling was to come to this workshop and to study about archetypes and her soul contract. And she chose not to go to the Grammys. So I just wanted to comment on that because just the synchronicity of how spirit works and how life works and how everything is so perfect in its timing. So when I was asked to submit my talk title for today's service a few months ago, I knew that what I was feeling on the day that I submitted that title would be something different that was occurring today in our world. And what I trusted is that spirit would guide me to align with what was given to me on that day that I submitted it, that it would align perfectly for today, and it has. And the first sign of that, of course, was that song that just was, was just shared with us by India Ari. So when I sat down earlier this week to decide and to really feel into the title, change your mind, change your life, a story came to me. And this is that story. This story is of a little girl. It is a little girl who, when asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? She answered, I want to be rich and famous. And how are you going to do that? I'm going to be a dancer, or I'm going to be an actress, but I'm going to be rich and famous. And this was something that didn't come from this little girl's mind, although she didn't know it at the time. This was a feeling that came in this little girl's body, that she knew that what it was that she was going to do in this life was something that it was going to be of, for her, in her language, rich and famous. And so as she grew, she kept that same idea with her. And when she got into high school, she realized, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think I'm going to become an actress. I don't think I'm going to become a dancer. But I still feel like I'm going to become rich and famous. And so when people would ask her, so what are you going to do when you grow up? What are you going to do when you graduate high school? And she'd say, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer. And she decided, you know, I'll, I'll give up on the, on the famous part, but I'm going to be the rich part. <laughs> and as she got closer to her senior year and about to finish, something changed for her. And what changed for her is that Again, she realized, I don't think I want to be a doctor. I don't think I want to be a lawyer. I think I want to do something that's calling my spirit. I think I want to do something that's calling inside of my body that's compelling me. And I don't know if people are going to accept it. I don't know if my parents are going to say, that's OK. You're not going to college in the traditional way. So at the end of her senior year, she shared with her parents what she wanted to do, and that was to be an artist. And that was to be and follow her, her heart of being a sculptress. And so that's what she pursued. And as she went on that journey, and she went in and out of all the different ways in which we journey life, and through the trials and tribulations of her hero's journey, she knew that this passion she felt inside of her needed to be answered.
because she knew that was her creative spirit. She knew as she grew that this was not her mind, this was her soul speaking to her, that this was the impulse within herself, that drive that, that's, that our soul speaks to us in that says, follow this, follow this. And that's what she did. And so as she moved through her life and she began to develop and create and create a reputation for herself through her work, she became one with her work, one with her artistry. And what she realized, what she was doing, is she was channeling spirit. That spirit was speaking through her. That the art was not coming from this place in her mind. This, this art was coming from this place that was deeper and greater than what she even knew. And as she dove deeper into her work, that grace that was channeled was the form that she was sharing with the world. And what she realized over time is that richness that she knew she was called to was the richness of the soul she would be experiencing. And that fame was the recognition of that as well. Because, see, the soul does not speak ego. The soul speaks love, and the soul speaks grace. And it is through will that it expresses itself through. And that's what she came to know and understand. And so in that way, she had fulfilled the very thing inside of her that she knew she was destined to do, and she followed it. And I share this story today because I believe that that is where we all are at right now. I believe that we are in a place in our world where we are trying to understand the difference between our ego's calling versus our soul calling. I heard a politician say, America is trying to find its soul. And I believe that there is truth to that, but I believe it even bigger. I believe that humanity is trying to find its soul. That little girl became rich and famous in another way because she tapped into her soul nature. The soul has an impulse to serve. The soul has an impulse to contribute. The soul has an impulse to feel and to love. And more than anything, it has an impulse to be an agent of God and God's will. We are being asked to live a more deeply soul-centered life right now. In the ancient study of astrology, the astrology right now, <clears throat> excuse me, is telling us, is saying to us, there's my water. We are in Capricorn time. 2020 is Capricorn time. And so what is Capricorn time? Well, the sign of Capricorn is symbolized by the mountain. It is symbolized by the mountain and the goat. But this goat is no ordinary goat. It is a sure-footed goat. It is the mountain goat whose work, whose mission is to climb the mountaintop. And this mountaintop is the mountain of consciousness. And with every journey that we make to the mountaintop, which is our, arch our archetypal life path, not only for ourselves, but for humanity. As we're journeying that mountaintop, we sometimes enter a fog. The higher we get, there's a fog, and we can't quite see where we're going. But what the mountain goat knows is that it must continue. It must continue through the fog because it knows that there is the top. 
And just as we are, so above, so below. And humanity in and itself is an entity which has a soul and which has a personality just like you and I. And we know when we are working and going through our own personal struggles that there's sometimes that we say, haven't I already done this? Haven't I already figured this out? And the answer many times is yes, you have. And now, my dear sweet friend, we are going deeper. So yes, we are going to see that shadow come up. Yes, we are going to see those things. We're going to feel that pain because we are going deeper. And as we go deeper, we evolve more into our soul-centered self. We evolve more into that soul-centered mind that is guided by the impulses of the soul and not the will of the ego. So we are in a battleground right now. We are once again in a battleground to fight for the soul of humanity, to fight for the soul of each and every one of us. Because as above, so below. And there is discomfort with this, and there is pain with this, as every transformational process brings. There is a point of tension. The late, great Martin, Martin Luther King said, I have seen the mountaintop. You know, as, as I was sitting here listening to this last piece of music before I came on, it made me emotional. And it made me emotional for so many reasons, but especially for the synchronicity in which spirit works. As I'm sitting here in this community today, and listening to that song and hearing India Ari and seeing those pictures of Martin Luther King and all of those other pioneers before us that are paving the way for this change to come. And one might say and make it about the struggle that we're in and that, oh, we're doing this again? Yeah, we're doing this again. Yes, we are. Because as I said earlier, we're going deeper. I think that many times as we move through our life and we reach certain points where things are animated within us that, for example, for fear, what, what this 2020 year has brought for us is really just triggered a lot of things for us in our body. And we're looking and contemplating things that we haven't contemplated before. We're being challenged in, challenged in ways that we haven't been before. We've been controlled in ways that we haven't been before. Our values are being examined. Our values are being challenged. And I hear sometimes people will say, I can't wait till we get back to normal. And I always say, normal is what got us here. And this is a, no, a new world that we're embarking on. And we don't even know what it is because we're not supposed to know what it is because if we knew what it is, it would be the same. This is the uncertainty of the unknown, and the unknown is where that space lies, where nothing exists, and that's where we all need to enter in and lean into that place of non-existence, because that's where the new is coming. It's time for us to leave the old behind. And when we, lo when we leave our old identity behind, we actually feel like we are letting a part of ourself go. We actually feel like we're losing an arm or a leg. Or it's like, no, there's no way. I cannot let that go. I cannot let that go. I need to hang on to that. 
for that is what I know and that is what's kept me safe. And believe it or not, this whole way in which we are living, as safe as it doesn't feel, on some level we have been saying, oh, but this has kept us safe. But that's not the truth. That's what our ego is telling us. Keep us safe. Keep me in this same environment, even though the mind's saying, get me out. It's such a paradox. I believe it's our work to be willing to let go. It's our work to, to be able, to, not to be able, to be willing to just say, I don't know where I'm going. I'm in the fog, but I trust and what we know about being in the fog is, is what the fog teaches us, that faith is our compass. It teaches us to not, no longer see in the ways which we have seen before. That's why the fog is here. That's what we can do with that fog. I don't know where I'm going because I'm not supposed to know where I'm going. And then the fog lifts, and what is revealed are things that we had no idea were even there. I think sometimes we want answers. We want things to be done so that we can settle inside. We want things to be calm. We want things to be straightened out so we can rest assured inside of our bodies that, oh, everything's going to be okay. But this time is not that time. This time is to say, I'm just going to stay the course here. This isn't about getting ourself, our egos, calm so that we're okay. This is about willing to be in the discomfort of everything and allowing that to continue to unfold as it needs to unfold. The last speech that Martin Luther gave was that speech, I have seen the mountaintop. And I want to read a quote from it because it's so powerful. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult times ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I have been to the mountaintop and I've looked over and I have seen the promised land. And that is beautiful. I don't believe that it's about us needing to see the promised land in the literal sense, but to know it's there. Because the scene is with, through the eyes, beyond the literal mind. It goes into the soul. I see the promised land. And we were all born in this time right now to be a part of what is going on in the world and humanity right now. When we change our mind and we change how we think, we change the world. And so it is.